Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixelpad tutorial. We are coding our Food Slashers game and in the last video we added the scores to our game. So now our Foods gives us uh, scores and the score is uh, displayed here on the console window for us. So the first thing I want to do today is I don't want all the fruits to give me the same score. So I don't want all the fruits to give me one point, for example. So what I'll do is uh, something like the banana will give me two points, the the eggplant will give me four points, the orange will give me, I don't know, one point, right? We can choose the different uh, scores that each fruit will give us. So to do that, I'm first gonna go here on the fruit class. And here in the fruit class, I will need a variable to store how many points this fruit is gonna give me. But this variable is going to be different for each of the fruits. So here uh, we get a random number, right, between 0 and 4. That actually is going to give me a number between 0 and 3, right? Because we transform this number into an integer number. And whenever we, our number is 0, then we set the sprite to be the banana. But I also want, if my number is 0, I also want to set a variable, so I'll say here self dot points. So points here, if my sprite is banana, my points will be one. So I will get one point from the banana, if I slice a banana, right? So here we have the number one, that is an eggplant. And if it is an eggplant, then I want self dot points, self dot points to be equal, so if it is an eggplant, it will give me three points. And if it is an orange, self.points is gonna be five. And if it is a pineapple, self.points is gonna be uh, six. So you can see that my pineapple gives me six points, my orange gives me five points, my eggplant gives me three points, and my banana gives me one point. But if we just try to play the game the way it is, we will still be getting one point uh, on each fruit. That's because we're not using these variable points that we created anywhere, right? So instead of using the way we are using here on the slicer loop tab, because this we did last class, right? Last video. So here we just say, down here on the slicer on the loop tab. Uh, if my mouse left button was pressed, then I create the trail, right, for my slicer. And I check if I have a collision between myself, the slicer, and any object from the class fruit. If there is a collision, then I get the exact fruit that has collided with me. And I increase my score in one, I print my score, and I destroy the fruit. So instead of increasing my score in one, I actually want to increase my score with the fruit dot points. So you can see that fruit we get here, right? From the exact fruit that has collided with us. And that fruit has a sprite and a certain amount of points that we've just set it here on the uh, fruit start, right? Self points, self points, self points. All the options have a punctuation to give us, right? So here on the slicer, whenever I slice a fruit, it will check how many how many points this fruit is giving us and increase in our score in our score. All right, so let's test it out. Let me save my game and press play. And you can see that now if I slice an orange, five points, eggplant, three more points. Uh, let's see what else. Another eggplant, three more points, eggplant, three more points, pineapple. I think I sliced two of them, well. But yeah, you can see that each fruit now is giving us different amount of points, right? What if we wanted a fruit to decrease our points instead of increasing our points? Well, that's pretty simple. I'm gonna go here on my fruit on the start tab and I'm gonna say that my pineapple actually is gonna take from me three points. How can I do that? So instead of I say that this is gonna give me six points, this is gonna give me minus three points. So instead of summing six points, now it, was, it is subtracting three points. So whenever I slice a pineapple now, 
you can see that I get minus three points. And an eggplant gives me three points, so I went to zero. Orange gives me five points. Pineapple there again, so I went from 10 to seven. So that's how we can decrease our score using this point system here. Now, let's say I want to uh, make my score to be zero or to reset my score whenever I slice a fruit. So what would I do? So if I want to decrease my score, I have to use minus. All right. So what is, what is to lose on my score? So if I have 10 points, I have to lose 10 points, right? If I have uh, 50 points, I have to lose 50 points. So if I want to reset my score once I slice the pineapple, I want to say that this is going to give me points that is equals minus uh, the game dot score. So whatever my game score is, this fruit here, pineapple, is going to take all my score from me. So let's say I have uh, 25 score, right? Whenever I slice the pineapple, the pineapple will take from me minus 25. Minus 25. So that will make my score to be zero. So that's how we can reset scores as well. So if we test this the way it is, let's see. I get five, I get eight, and I go to zero, right? Let's try again. Uh, okay, eggplant, eggplant, banana, eggplant. So I have 10, 11, and zero. So you can see that uh, that works perfectly, right? Okay, one last one. What if I want this fruit, the pineapple, not to take score from me, but I want it to give me half of my score. So let's say I have uh, 50 score points right now. The pineapple should give me 25 because it's half of 50. If I have 84 score points, then the pineapple should give me 42, right? So how can I do that? Well, I can say that the pineapple is going to give me the game dot score divided by two. So whatever my score is, the pineapple will divide that by two and will give me S points. But here we will find a small problem. That is if we have an odd number like three and we slice a pineapple, so half of three is 1.5, right? So now my score is 4.5. So to avoid this kind of stuff, what we can do is we can just transform this into an integer, right? Because we know that this point something is a float number. And if we don't want that, we can just say int and surround whatever we want to transform into an integer with uh, brackets. So I can say int game.score divided by two, and that's it. Now, whatever score I get, it'll be rounded to an integer number. So now, I, now, for example, I have five. If I slice a pineapple, I should get 7.5, but now I will get seven because we round the game score divided by two, right? Which is pretty cool. So uh, for my pineapple, I will leave my default six points here but you can choose whatever points you want for your fruits. And that's a good way for you to practice, right? So one last thing that I want to do on today's class is to add a background to our game. So the background is an image that goes behind our game, right? Behind everything. So first let's look for the image. So I'm gonna go here on the sprites and look for a good background image to use in my game. Okay, I'll choose this one here, the sky background. Select asset and I'll call this uh, sky. That's the name of my sprite. And now I'm gonna need a class to hold my background. And I'll call this class background. Background, yeah. Press OK and now I have my class background there. All right, now that we have the class background, let's go inside the game class and here in the game class, I want to create my background, right? I want to show my background in the game. So what I can do, I can say here, background, brackets, brackets. And this is going to create for me my background inside my game, right? So here, for example, you might ask me, why do I have a spawner and I create this spawner using a variable? But here for the slicer, I don't do it. And here for the background, I also don't do it. 
That's because for the spawner, we also want to change the spawner's X position. So here I store my spawner inside a fruits creator variable, and then I change the spawner's X position for 800. So if I wasn't going to change anything from my spawner, I didn't have to store it inside a variable, right? We just store stuff inside variables if we want to use them later or if we need to access them later, right? Specifically. But for example, the spawner, I never have to access my spawner again because it, it just does its own stuff, right? I don't have to do anything with that. And the same for my slicer and the same for my background. So what we could do here on the spawner actually is I will, because for now our spawner, the only thing we do here on the game is to move my spawner's X to be 800, right? So what I will do, I will remove this from here and I will also remove this variable. Now I don't need any variable to create my spawner. I just say spawner brackets brackets and that creates my spawner inside the game for me. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside my spawner and I'm going to say that this will make its own X position to be 800. So I basically passed all that code that I had here on, the, on those two lines to inside my spawner. So instead of my game setting my, my spawner's X position, my spawner sets its own X position. Now you can see that we don't need to have two lines here and we don't need to create a variable, right? We can just say spawner and the spawner does its own stuff. And this looks way better, right? This can look even better if I move this line here, the game.score up. So I will remove this from here and I'll put it up here, game.score equals zero. And I have those two variables together because they're global variables, right? They can be accessed from anywhere. So it makes sense, let them together. And I can leave uh, these three uh, objects being created together as well, right? But let's keep going then with the background. My background was created but it doesn't have a sprite, so it has a blue square in the middle of my game, right? So what I can do, I'm gonna go inside my background and I'm gonna give it a sprite. So I'm gonna say that self.sprite is equals sprite brackets apostrophes and the name of my uh, sprite that is sky.png. So sky.png, right? Whenever I stop and play my game, it works. It kind of works. You can see that now my slicer is gone. My slicer just shows up whenever I press to slice something. That's because if you see here on my game, my background is being created after my slicer, right? So that makes my slicer being created before my background and behind my background. So my slicer is behind my background. So why isn't the trail behind the background? because the trail is only created whenever we hold the left button of the mouse, right? So the trail is created after my background. After my background is created inside my game, whenever I click to slice something, then my trail is created, right? So that's why my trail shows on top of my background, but my slicer not. So what we want to do is because the background is an image that should be at the back of our game, right? Behind everything else. Because it's just an image and because its function is to be behind everything else, right? So the only thing that I have to do here is I have to move this background creation line here to up here. So before I create any other object, the background will be the first object that I create. And this will make my background be behind everything. So I create my background first of all, and then I create my spawner and then I create my slicer. So now you can see that I can see my slicer dot again, right? Let me make this window bigger so you can see better. There you go. So now it's easier to see my, my slicer. Cool. That's very good. So that's it for the class today. Hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. So save your game and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.